Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Today, we are going to be continuing our study in the ancient book of Jubilees found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. We're going to be looking at ver- or chapter 26 and 27. And uh, what we're dealing with here is this is the point where Jacob uh, it becomes blessed as the firstborn instead of Esau. Uh, through what appears to be a little trickery. And then we have the ladder of Jacob, where he sees the angels ascending and descending in this certain area. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this situation with Jacob a little bit, in how that Esau, we look, you know, because I'll hear pastors talk about how Jacob was this trickster, this shyster, or whatever. But really, you know, if you're really, if you if you look at Genesis and the account in Genesis, and you look at what's being said here in Jubilees, what's really going on is that Jacob was the chosen one. You know, Jacob, I loved Esau, I hated the scriptures say. And Rachel was told that. Uh, did I say Rachel? I think I meant. Rebecca, I get those two confused. Rebecca. Rebecca is told by Abraham, according to the book of Jubilees, that Jacob would be the one. Uh, would be the one that would continue on the line and that the descendants would come from. Um, and then God had told uh, Rebecca that as well. So even though it seems like we have this evil plan going on, we have to remember it's just like when Jacob. Uh, traded a bowl of soup to Esau for his birthright it, it, you know first of all it says that Esau despised his birthright he said to himself what good is it if I die because I'm so hungry you know so that's kind of how I look at it um, although it is a strange way to <laughs> receive the blessing, but it was what was meant to be. And Jacob was the one to be chosen. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Chapter 26 and 27 in the ancient book of Jubilees. Before we get started, real quick, if you're being blessed by this, if you're finding hope in Christ uh, because of this podcast, uh, please consider supporting it. Uh, you can do that by going to scriptureandprophecy.com or if you're listening to this on YouTube, the links are in the description below. You can become a a monthly Patreon subscriber, uh, or you can use PayPal, or there's a post office box. The podcast is 100% listener supported, and I thank all of you for your prayers and for your support. All right, let's dig in. Chapter 26, the ancient book of Jubilees. Verse 1. And in the seventh year of this week, Isaac called Esau his elder son and said unto him, I am old, my son, and behold, my eyes are dim in seeing, and I know not the day of my death. And now take thy hunting weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and hunt and catch me venison, my son, and make me a savior meat, such as my soul loveth, and bring it to me that I may eat, and that my soul may bless thee before I die. But Rebekah heard Isaac speaking to Esau, and Esau went forth early to the field to hunt and to catch and to bring home to his father. And Rebekah called Jacob her son and said unto him, Behold, I heard Isaac thy father speak unto Esau, Esau thy brother, saying, Hunt for me and make me savory meat and bring it to me that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before I die. And now, my son, obey my voice, and that which I command thee. Go to thy flock, and fetch me two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savior meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, and he may eat and bless thee before the Lord before he die, and that thou mayest be blessed. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Mother, I shall not withhold anything which my father would eat, and which would please him, only I fear, my mother, that he will recognize my voice and wish to touch me. And thou knowest that I am smooth, and Esau my brother is hairy, and I shall appear before his eyes an evildoer. 
and shall do a deed which he had not commanded me, and he will be wroth with me, and I shall bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. And Rebekah his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son, only obey my voice. And Jacob obeyed the voice of Rebekah his mother, and went and fetched two good and fat kids of the goats, and brought them to his mother, and his mother made them savory meat, such as he loved. And Rebekah took the goodly raiment of Esau, her elder son, which was with her in the house, and she clothed Jacob, her younger son, with them. And she put the skins of kids upon his hands and on the exposed parts of his neck. And she gave the meat and the bread, which she had prepared unto the hand of her son Jacob. And Jacob went into his father and said, I am thy son. I have done according to thou hast badest me. Arise, sit, and eat of that which I have caught, father that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said to his son, How hast thou found so quickly, my son? And Jacob said, Because the Lord thy God caused me to find. And Isaac said unto him, Come near, that I may feel thee, my son, if thou art my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near to Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because it was a dispensation from heaven to remove his power of perception. And Isaac discerned not, for his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's, so that he blessed him. All right, real quick, uh, according to the book of Jubilees here, um, this was part of the plan, and Isaac's eyes were actually, uh, his perception actually was dimmed from being able to determine whether that it was Jacob instead of Esau. It says right here that Jacob says to that Isaac says to himself, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he cer discerned him not because was a dispensation from heaven to remove his power of perception. And Isaac discerned not, for his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau's, so that he blessed him. Verse 19, And he said, Are thou my son Esau? And he said, I am thy son. And he said, Bring near to me, that I may eat of that which thou hast caught my son, and that my soul may bless thee. And he brought near to him, and he did eat, and he began him, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And Isaac his father said unto him, Come near, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and he kissed him, and he smelled the smell of raiment. And he blessed him, and he said, Behold, the smell of my son is a smell of a full field, which the Lord hath blessed. And may the Lord give thee of the dew of heaven, and of the dew of earth, and plenty of corn and oil. Let nations serve thee, and peoples bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. And may all the blessings wherewith the Lord hath blessed me, and blessed Abraham my father, be imparted to thee, and to thy seed forever. Cursed be he that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of the blessing of his son Jacob, and Jacob had gone forth from Isaac his father, he hid himself, and Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. And he also made a savory meat, and he brought it to his father, and he said unto his father, Let thy father arise, and eat of my venison. And thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said unto him, I am thy firstborn, thy son Esau. I have done as thou commanded me. And Isaac was very greatly astonished and said, Who is he who hath hunted and caught and brought it to me? And I have eaten all before thou camest, and have blessed him, and he shall be blessed, and all his seed forever. And it came to pass when Esau heard the words of his father Isaac, that he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and he said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, father. And he said unto him, Thy brother came in with guile, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Now I know why his name is named Jacob. Behold, he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And now he hath taken away my blessing. 
And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me, father? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, with plenty of, of calm and wine, of corn and wine and oil, have I strengthened him. And what now shall I do for thee, my son? And Esau said to Isaac his father, Hast thou but one blessing, O father? Bless me, even me also, father. And Esau lifted up his voice, and he wept. And Isaac answered and said unto him, Behold, far from the dew of the earth shall be thy dwelling, and far from the dew of heaven above. And by thy sword wilt thou live, and thou wilt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou becomest great, and dost shake his yoke from off thy neck, thou wilt sin a complete sin unto death, and thy seed will be rooted out from under heaven. And Esau kept threatening Jacob because of the blessing, wherewith his father blessed him, and he said in his heart, May the days of mourning for my father now come, so that I may slay my brother Jacob. All right, before we move on to chapter 27, I just think we should take the time, and again, this story is found in the book of Genesis, and the account is nearly identical. And there's nothing here, you know, there's nothing that's contradicting what we read in Genesis. The first thing I think we should notice is that what you speak over your kids matters and has power. I mean, Esau knew that Jacob would really be blessed. And Isaac knew that Jacob really would be. And Isaac even says, I can't, I can't undo this. I've already done it. I've already spoken this over Jacob. And it's set in stone. And it is what it is. You know, because Esau's like, wait, can't you, you know. But Isaac's making the point, I can't reverse it. I can't reverse it. This is now how it's going to be. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to, you're going to serve Jacob now. And then he prophesies that Esau will be a man of the sword, and that eventually he will sin a sin unto death, and that his whole seed will be rooted out from the earth. There's power. There's so much power in words. I don't even think we understand the power of words. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not saying buy into the name it, claim it. You know, prosperity gospel, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying what you speak over a person can have a profound impact on their life especially when it comes to blessing your kids all right let's move on to chapter 27 and then we'll wrap it up verse 1 and the words of Esau her elder son were told to Rebekah in a dream and Rebekah sent and called Jacob her younger son and said unto him behold Esau thy brother will take vengeance on thee so as to kill thee now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, and flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days, until thy brother's anger turneth away. And he remove his anger from thee, and forget all that thou hast done. Then I will send and fetch thee from thence. And Jacob said, I am not afraid. If he wishes to kill with me, I will kill him. But she said unto him, Let me not be bereft of both of my sons in one day. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, thou knowest that my father hath become old, and did not see, because his eyes are dull. And if I leave him, it will be evil in his eyes, because I leave him and go away from you, and my father will be angry, and will curse me. I will not go when I will not go. When he sendeth me, then only will I go. And Rebekah said to Jacob, I will go in and speak to him, and he will send thee away. And Rebekah went in and said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the two daughters of Heth, whom Esau hath taken him as wives. And if Jacob take a wife from among the daughters of the land of such as these, for what purpose do I further live? For the daughters of Canaan are evil. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him, and admonished him, and said unto him, do not take thee a wife of any of the daughters of Canaan. Arise and go to Mesopotamia, to the house of Bethel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife.
from thence of the daughters of Laban thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and increase and multiply thee, that thou mayest become a company of nations, and give thee the blessing of my father Abraham, to thee and to thy seed after thee, that thou mayest inherit the land of the sojournings and all the land which God gave to Abraham. Go, my son, in peace. And Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Mesopotamia, to Laban, to the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's mother. And it came to pass, after Jacob had arisen to go to Mesopotamia, that the spirit of Rebekah was grieved after her son, and she wept. And Isaac said to Rebekah, my sister, weep not on account of Jacob, my son, for he goeth in peace, and in peace will he return. The Most High God will preserve him from all evil, and he will be with him, and he will not forsake him all of his days. For I know that his ways will be prospered in all things wherever he go, until he return in peace to us, and we see him in peace. Fear not on his account, my sister, for he is on the upright path. And he is a perfect man, and he is faithful, and will not perish. Weep not. And Isaac comforted Rebekah on account of her son Jacob, and blessed him. And Rebekah went from the well of the oath to go to Haran on the first year of the second week. Or, I'm sorry. And Jacob, in verse 19, And Jacob went from the well of the oath to, go to Haran on the first year of the second week, in the forty-fourth jubilee. And he came to Luz on the mountain, that is, Bethel, on the new moon of the first month of this week. And he came to the place at even and turned from the way of the west the road that night, and he slept there, for the sun had set. And he took one stone of that place and laid it at his head under the tree, and he was journeying alone, and he slept. And he dreamt that night, behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of the Lord ascended and descended on it. And behold, the Lord stood upon it. And he spake to Jacob and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. And the land wherein thou art sleeping, to thee shall I give it, and to thy seed after thee. And thy seed will be as the dust of earth, and thou will increase to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee thy seed will all the families of the nations be blessed. And behold, I shall be with thee, and shall keep thee wheresoever thou goest. And I shall bring thee again into his, this land in peace, for I shall not leave unto thee until I do everything that I have told of thee. And Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he said, Truly this place is the house of the Lord, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and he said, Dreadful is this place which none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. You know, what's interesting is some people believe that there literally is like portals and gates uh, in certain places in the world. Um, and you have angels coming down at certain mountains. Um, you know, when you read the book of Enoch and you read about the 200 angels that descended. Um, you think about Christ taking the three disciples up the mount and then appears Elijah and Moses and and then you have this dream here of Jacob the, the ladder of Jacob and he sees angels and descending angels descending and ascending and he said then it said the ladder went up to heaven and he calls it a gate and I just think that's interesting interesting thing to think about and you know, he says, dreadful is this place, meaning he's, he's just terrified by it because the holiness of God is there. And he says, and this is the gate of heaven. Verse 26, And Jacob arose early in the morning, and he took the stone which he had put under his head, and he set it up as a pillar for a sign, and he poured oil upon the top of it, and he called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of the place was Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow unto the Lord, saying, if the Lord will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God 
And this stone which I have set up as a pillar for a sign in this place shall be the Lord's house. And of all that thou givest me, I shall give the tenth to thee, my God. A couple things real quick. It says that the land that he was at, that was Beth El, but the name of the place at that time was Luz at first. And I just thought that was interesting. It says that, you know, in the book of Job, it says that Job was the man in the land of Uz. Not Luz, but Uz. I just wonder if that's the same place that we're talking about. Uh, if that's where Job was from as well. And I only know that because I've been reading through the book of Job. And so I just thought that was interesting and I thought I would bring that up. And then Jacob vows that if God brings him back safely home in peace... You know, you have to remember that Jacob is terrified and he's running. He's, he's not only going to spend some time with his uncle and to take a wife for himself, but he's also running from his brother who wants to execute him for stealing his blessing. So he's saying, if God brings me back in peace, then I will worship that him and acknowledge him as the, as the one true God. In the meantime, all that he gives me, everything he blesses me with, I'm going to give back 10%. And so we, you know, that, that that seems to be a theme with Abraham, um, and now with Jacob, this idea that I'm going to honor God with my finances by a ten percent giving. Now you'll hear some people, uh, you'll hear TV evangelists and stuff say, "You need to give this much and this much, and God will bless you." I don't buy into that. I think the point of the tithe, you know, Paul says, "Give be a cheerful giver." I think the point of the tithe is just a a way of, it's a form of worship almost. Um, It's a form of acknowledging that God has given me this and I'm giving part of it back as my way of acknowledging that it all belongs to him and that all my prosperity really comes from God at the end of the day. And so when I read that, that's kind of how I view that 10% um, that you see with Abraham and now you see with Jacob. So anyway, there you have it. I pray that you've been blessed this morning. I messed up on a few words. I apologize for that. Uh, Please be patient with me. I I do the best I can. (laughs) But uh, like all of you, I am not perfect. Uh, And there's only one who is perfect. And that's our Father in Heaven and His Son, Jesus Christ. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.